Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum where we have a new arrival. The 2009 V8 Vantage Roadster, the 4.7 facelift and a car that is very special for me personally. This was the first Schmimobile. I bought it back in 2010 when the car had 3,000 miles on the clock. I owned it for about two years and sold it when it was up to 19,000 miles. Well, fast forward nine years later, it now has 31,000 on it, but I've bought it back. It's rejoined the collection. This was my first proper sports car. It was my first car that ever really featured on the channel as a Schmimobile, a name that came from you guys. The first car that I was driving when I filmed a video to the camera. It was the first car I took on a road trip to share the adventures. It was a car that had serious memories for me, some very special moments. And after nine years, the car kind of found me and now I've bought it back. It's rejoined the collection. It was the inspiration for purchasing the GT8 back, well, almost five years ago now as the final version of this. It's a very pretty thing. And today we're going to have a full induction tour. I'll take you through all of the ins and outs of this particular car and some of the things that need to be done to it. Some of the restoration work that I think we'll be doing here on the Schmuseum channel to bring it back to its former glory as a permanent car in the collection, a very special and significant car, as I said, but let's start then. Let's walk around it. It's a very pretty thing. This generation of the V8 Vantage from Aston Martin was really a big part of saving the company at the time. Following from the DB9, this arrived and the world basically went, wow, that's a beautiful car. And even today, it's a timeless design. It looks magnificent. This is 12 years old. You don't look at it and think that's a 12 year old car, but the way they shaped it, the traditional Aston Martin grille, the bright option actually that this car has with the eight slats, some of the later cars then went down to six slats, but I remember that being one of the factory options against the glacial blue paintwork of this. Quite a rare specification for the car, but a wonderful paint color. And in fact, a paint color that really triggered the branding of Schmi 150. Light blue has always been one of my favorite colors as has purple, but this, was where that began, what then went on to be the different wraps and then the cerulean blue paintwork with McLaren, but glacial blue here on the Vantage. If we come on round, we've got the massively multi-spoked wheels. I remember they were always horrible to clean with the silver calipers behind them, but a symbol of it being the 4.7, the facelift you could tell through the new wheel design. The tires, we're gonna have to do something about, we'll get to that in a moment. And then the contrast of the interior, it is such a beautiful interior with the sandstorm leather the cream mixed with the navy blue for the dashboard around the doors, even back here on the buttresses. If we come round towards the rear of the car, it's such a lovely design. And I did think back at the time when I owned it before about changing the taillights and making them clear instead of red. It was an option, you could change them, but kept them red. I think it fits more in keeping with the time, the period of the car, wearing the Aston Martin badge, the Vantage badging back. It's such a lovely thing overall, really, really, a special car to begin with. Now this, as I said, is the facelift, the 4.7, which meant that it had 420 horsepower. The original car when it had launched back in 2004 had 400 horsepower from a 4.3 litre engine. It also had a few upgrades to the interior. And I want to go and pop open the bonnet so we can take a quick look at this and see the inspection plaque that it wears up front. So just down here in the passenger footwell, he says, there we go, give that a pull and we can come round towards the front. I think the catch is right in the middle, he says. Yeah, there we go. Always beautifully presented, 4.7 V8. The era where you could see a lot of what was going on, the support braces that run over at the top, and then the hand built in England, final inspection by Simon Ward, the man responsible for this particular car when they do the shakedowns. And you might remember what we did with my GT8 with Dr. Andy Palmer at the time, but a very, very pretty engine bay in keeping with the car. And most of these were ordered always in silver or darker, yeah, discreet colors, we could say, not bright color schemes like this. So this, when I saw it advertised, it stood out instantly. And it was, for me, it was just, it had to be that car. It was, it was not even a, a choice back then. And similarly now, exactly the same. It had to be this car. You might be wondering about the number plates. This is the private registration of the person from whom I have bought the car. It's going to be changing. And in fact, let me just grab this for you quickly. It's going to be 87TB, bringing it back. You have no idea how many of you guys ask me what happened to the 87TB registration. Well, here in the UK, when you take a plate off a car, 
you can put it on what's called a retention certificate, keeping it for 10 years, which you can then extend to one day in the future, assign it to another car. So this, of course, came off this car. It went onto the 12C. It was on my 650S Spider. Then it was on, well, sorry, it had the R8 and then the 12C, then the 650, then the 675 LT Coupe. But after that, it's only appeared since on the Schmini, my classic Mini that I owned briefly. And I've always been wondering, where's it gonna go in future? It's going on this. It's going onto the Vantage Roadster, very much in keeping with what it was like when I had it at the time. And on this plate, which is just an example plate, we've got that quote, car spotting is not a crime. That was where it all began for me, car spotting. So I think that's going to be going on. We'll get some new ones made up because this is old and pretty scratched and beaten up. But that's going to be the plate that it will wear. We'll take this one off and I'll, I'll send it back to the, um, to the original owner when I get the paperwork back through for that. Now to run through the interior a little bit more, let me open up this side for you. I'm just going to head around to the other side to show a few things about it. A lot of people, even back at the time, said that the steering wheel looks slightly out of date. Of course, homologation for steering wheels, you can't do all that much with it. But the 4.7 had this completely refreshed waterfall, as Aston Martin call it. You have the navigation screen that folds up here. Very out of date, you don't want to know about that. <laughs> Down here though, You've got your selectors for the reverse, neutral and drive. The key, the emotional control unit goes in here. Your comfort and sport button. You've got your multimedia controls. Down here, if you pop this, he says, there we go. You even have a pen that pops out of the dashboard. Nice details, hey? I actually loved that back at the time. I remember even signing an important contract with that way back when. You've got your card and coin holder, a little bit of space here, the button to do the boot, uh, sorry, to do the roof, I should say cigarette ashtray, your armrest. A lot of people don't know about this one with Aston Martins as well, your cup holder, or some additional storage space. You have, oh yes, the multimedia cable. That's the age for plugging in your audio devices. No USB or something like that back on this generation. A storage cubby back here, which I always found remarkably useful for things like gloves and a scarf for driving when it was cold or for dumping a video camera if you want to have one always available. So back in the car spotting days, there was always a camera living back there. And then a bit of storage space that you have actually in front of the buttresses as well. And it's such a clean design because even when you have the roof up, which we'll do shortly, this part is actually inside the car. So you have some bodywork, body colored section back here on the rear deck lid inside, which looks really very, very nice. And it was a great Grand Tourer. I mean, back here, there's a lot of space. You can fit a couple of wheelie bags. I think the previous owner had some bespoke floor mats made, but you can maneuver some things in. It does have, or it would normally have a wind deflector that would attach onto these hooks, but I don't know where that's gone over the years. We'll have to work that one out. And we've got the trickle charger socket back here as well, so we can plug it in to keep the battery alive. We'll get it on a SeaTac charger when it's parked up. I think this bag is actually just, yeah, the locking wheel, that's the original locking wheel. That's probably a bag that I put in this car years ago. And talking about things I put in the car, there's something to show you in a moment. And you have all these purple anodized metal parts here and also on the door kick sills, which are just quite nice. Oh, I remember this. This is the emergency latch if somebody should be locked in the boot of a car. And I remember it had come off and I could never get it attached properly. So it still hasn't been attached properly. That's from way back then. Now, talking of things, I suppose, that need work. Paint work, it's in pretty good shape overall. There are a few things here and there, obviously slightly swirly. It's not been for a topaz treatment or anything like that. Around at the front, aside from the bugs from driving it back here, I only found one or two small stone chips, so I don't know if it's going to be worth a spray just for these little bits. We'll have to make a decision on that slightly down the line and see what ends up being better. The wheels, the wheels need to be fixed. So have a quick look here. We've got um, a fair bit of curb rash. Those are going to need to be sorted out at some point very soon. So we'll have to get all four of them done. And the tires, I promised I would talk about the tires as well. If I can find the date stamp on these, you will prepare to be quite shocked by it. I failed to find it on that side, but the date stamps on the tires, if we can find one here, they're a little bit dirty. Where are they? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Do, 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 here. 3411. That means week 34, 2011. So these are tires that I put on this car about 10 years ago. If you know anything about tires, that's really, really bad. So we're gonna to have to get the wheels refurbished. This one has a little bit of curb rashing. We have to get four new tires as soon as possible. I don't really want this car driven on 10 year old tires. 
that's not good at all. One other thing that was a common problem with Vantages, which this has suffered as well, you will spot on both mirror arms, we have the corrosion, the satin black paint that you have on here, and I actually had that fixed once before when I had this car. Unfortunately, they corrode. I think it's worse if we go around towards the other side as well. Yeah, you can see here. So that needs to be done for sure. Those mirror arms, not too big a deal. We'll get those sorted. Here, this is slightly annoying. You can probably just see there's a little dent in the chrome trim and even on the door, but that should be quite easy to pull out, I would think. Just a little door ding that it's got here and maybe that needs a new piece of chrome trim. It's not too bad though. Wheels, tires, that little dent inside I want to talk about. Have a look at the seats. You can spot a few marks to the leather. You'd probably expect that from this amount of usage, but also this frayed seat belt. The driver's seat is worse. We'll go around and have a look at that. So we need to get some new seat belts. We need to restore the leather. In fact, obviously, as you would expect, the driver's seat has had this worse. But round on the driver's side, we have a few bits here. It's quite heavily worn there on the bolster little bit of wrinkling around here, not too bad. And then this seat belt, if I pull it out, have a look at this. Yeah, I don't think that's good. So we need to get that sorted. So we need to get some new seat belts in here to make sure it's all fine on that front. It might be nice to have a refreshed steering wheel. It looks a little bit greasy and shiny. There might be ways to restore that as well. I'll see what the options are on that front. But overall, it's actually in pretty good shape considering you know, a 31,000 mile 12 year old car. Now I want to show you a few more of the things that I've actually got down here as well. So we have, with this, the two valet keys. These are again a bit worn. They're actually a standard Volvo part. They go into the same centre console. I guess they're the ones you give to the valet and don't worry about. And then you have the ECU, the emotional control unit, which had a chip on it from the first owner. That was actually chipped when I picked up the car. And I remember when I bought this car, how disappointed I was that that was chipped, but they cost back then, I think about a thousand pounds for a new one of these, about $1,500. So yeah, I'll have to see if I'm gonna replace it or leave it as it is. And that also has a little leather pouch that it goes in. So we'll keep that one at home looking nice. And these will be the ones, or one of these will be the ones that get used. We also have here the backup key, um, which actually isn't part of this because it uses the ECU, there's no key in that. So on this one, that is a Bentley Broughton's tag because I bought this car from Bentley Broughton's, which is now on the same site as Lamborghini Pangborn where my Hurricane STO is coming from. And that's the same site where I bought this car back in 2010. That is crazy. We also have the usual bits that you get with a new car, the tracker fobs. We don't use those anymore. I don't think I even used them back at the time because this car actually had the ability to use your phone over Bluetooth as the tracker fob. You had a red light on the dashboard and it would show uh, if you didn't have your phone connected. And then we have all of the papers. And the fun thing with all of the papers and documents, which obviously have names and addresses, so I can't open all of those, is that I obviously gave the documents that I had for the car to the person who bought it from me, who gave them to the next owner, who's now given them back to me. So we've got the full Aston Martin service history. It's always been to main dealers, which is great. It's got that full annual service record, everything that a car like this should have, all of its MOT checks, which is the annual roadworthiness test that we have here in the UK. So we've got all of that, which is again, really, really nice. What I do want to do though, is just start it up, show you the roof. So we'll take a quick listen to the noise. Although before that, come around to this side so I can show you on the dashboard. Because when you put the key in here, it does this very nice, Message, he says, 31,193 miles now. Pop that in. Power, beauty, soul, Aston Martin. Lovely details. Let's take a quick listen to this. Just wake it up. Obviously a little bit of a, a slightly older car. <laughs> Still sounds the part. But let me do the roof. If you take a look at this, watch the process and how that works. The deck lid opens towards the rear. The roof actually folds up pretty quickly. You can do it while you're driving. Deck lid folds back down. The roof goes into place and it's navy blue against the glacial blue as well, which just makes for a really nice contrast. Windows go up. And to say that getting too hot in here will turn it off, but it's a really elegant looking thing, I think. And like I said, the view through this rear window, the way you can see that body part on the deck, Smart. Obviously, 
Soft top convertibles never look as good roof up as their coupe equivalents. Same story goes for the Vantage, and obviously the GT8 is the coupe body style, which has a nice sloping rear, lots of luggage space back there, a lot more than the Roadster has. But this is an elegant car. This was an elegant time. This was Aston Martin at their best, making a car that was beautiful in its design and its appearance. And I also notice we've got the original tax disc holder. So here in the UK, until probably five or six years ago, you always used to have your annual tax disc on display in a car. Now it's all done digitally. I probably put that in it back then as well. So that's nice to see. I remember that these used to wear away, but they actually look quite good. Those vents on the bonnet. They could look certainly significantly worse. And I need to work out what's going on here. I think when I put the plate back on, I'm not gonna be drilling it. We'll sticky pad it on so it holds a little bit more neatly. You've got the parking sensors down there too. So yeah, it's back. It's a car that, like I said, the first time I ever made a video talking to camera was, hi, I'm Tim, or Shmi150 as you might know me on YouTube, driving this in Parliament Square as the bells were ringing at Big Ben. I'll never forget that day, I'll never forget that video. And all the way from that to my first drives over to Paris, down to Monaco, joined by my friend Alex Smolik. We used to car spot together in Paris or down in Monaco, the south of France all the way through to the different drives and trips, joining the dodgeball rally with it, going also on the, uh, to chase the Gumball 3000 in 2011. I remember that well, driving all the way over to Paris. And one other fun thing that I actually found by mistake, although actually talking about going to the Gumball 3000 to Paris, I bought one of those tolls that allow you to use the uh, toll gates driving down the French auto routes to go a little bit faster. It's still got my mounting bracket in the windscreen. I was responsible for that and I forgot to take it out when I sold the car. I've still got the device. It's the same one I used through to today. And another thing that's quite funny is inside here, the seats have a little pouch at the front of them. And inside there is a letter from my mum <laughs> that has stayed in there through the multiple people that have owned it since. And I found that coincidentally as we were driving homewards with the car, popped in and just saw that sitting in there. You've got the swan doors, if you hadn't noticed, the way they come up as they go outwards. So that means you just give it a small push, it hinges itself back down. Just these small details. So we need to reinvigorate the car, give it a refresh, bring some more life back into it, give it new wheel, or not new wheels, but refurb the wheels, fix the tires, go over some of the paintwork elements, like on the door mirror arms, refresh the leather, replace the seat belts, but it's in pretty good shape. And that's the, I suppose, really exciting thing about it. The car is back. It's ready to be driven. It was lovely out on the roads with it. It's a beautiful color combination with the glacial blue, the navy roof, and the sandstorm interior. And honestly, I just couldn't be happier about it. It's, it's, I'm over the moon. The Vantage Roadster is back. I've been trying to hunt down the car. I've been wondering for a while, where is it? Where is, what's it doing? Where's it gone? You can do here in the UK a check to see if cars are out there, what they're doing, but you can't completely narrow them down. So I've been wondering and digging into it a little bit, but unable to find it until coincidentally, the gentleman that owned the car took it to an event. Somebody who knew that it had been my car previously saw it and sent me a photograph. I reached out via him to the event organizers who reached out to the owner of the car. And lo and behold, now it's here in the garage. So there we go, a bit of an induction tour, a bit of a start of the process. The Vantage Roadster here as a Schmiemobile back at the Schmuseum.